y'all, it's Katie, and today I'm talking all about my wedding updates, learning from my mistakes, and what you should do during the different time periods before your wedding. So I made a video way back. It's talking everything from your venue, photographer, videographer, DJ, and then I've also made videos on shopping for my wedding dress, my save the dates, and also choosing my bridesmaid dress colors. I'll have all those linked down below, but I feel like so much has happened since my last video. I wanted to build off of those and help with the timelines coming up. A lot of the things that I thought I had more time for, I ended up not, and I want y'all to learn from my mistakes so y'all don't make the same ones. If y'all like this wedding content, please feel free to subscribe. I know there are so many wedding videos about to come out. If that's something that interests y'all, those are coming soon. First vendors to book in this like six to nine month period. If you haven't already booked a wedding coordinator and you're planning on it, go ahead and book that now. They are absolutely hands down so helpful. I honestly thought it was a little extra to have like a coordinator or a planner, but oh my gosh, there are so many little details that you don't know about. We don't know any florists, caterers, just didn't know anything. And it really helps to have a professional guiding you through the process. Also, you might want to book them even further in advance, maybe at the nine to 12 months. It just depends on what type of coordinator you're looking for. I know there are day of coordinators, which I would highly, highly suggest bare minimum getting that. They are the person that is there on your wedding day, making sure everything goes according to plan. And that way you and your family don't have to worry about shuffling people everywhere and making sure things are done on time. There's also month of coordinators, which is someone who helps coordinate all of your vendors, make sure they know when they're arriving on time, when they're setting things up, etc. So they're reaching out to them and confirming those dates in the month before your wedding. And then there are also different type of full service planners, completely every single decision you make, you go through them. It also really helps if your coordinator has done weddings at your exact venue so they know what types of vendors work best there. The next vendor is your florist. Book your dang florist very, very early in advance. Probably the biggest struggle of wedding planning. I really didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. Apparently florists book out very far in advance. I had very good recommendations of florists in Austin. All of them were booked. I started reaching out asking for those florist recommendations. Everyone was already booked out through 2021. Definitely panicked a little. Even HEB. HEB, if you don't know, is a Texas grocery store. They were completely booked for the day of our wedding. I was just like, at this point, I'm not gonna have flowers at my wedding. I was looking into alternatives of kind of like DIY kits where you order the flower types and they have you put them together. I was also looking at places that were farther out, like in Houston, but everything happens for a reason. And we ended up getting connected with this wonderful florist and we're so excited for what she's able to do. And she's worked at our venue before, which is awesome. Also, I just thought, you know, you need bouquets, boutonnieres, whatever, but there are so many different decor pieces. It starts to get you thinking of what you actually want decorated at your venue. Bouquets, boutonnieres, different ceremony flowers, table flowers. There's like sweetheart table flowers, different spots to put any type of florals or greenery. Like we have a fireplace at our venue and different cake tables and entry tables. And if you want flowers on your cakes or a lot of different items to consider. So it really starts to get you thinking. I didn't think that we were gonna have that many flowers. You know, I never really envisioned any type of wedding with super extravagant flowers, but a lot of florists, which I didn't know, have very high minimums. Maybe it's just in the Austin area. I'm I'm sure they do a wonderful, amazing job, but I know for the types of flowers that I wanted and the minimal amount of flowers that I wanted, that was just not in our budget. You want to make sure that you get your first pick for both type of florist, but also in your price range. Next one is your caterer. So it's very important to try and lock this down early because this may not just be something that you just choose and select and you're all good. You're gonna wanna try different types of food, go over the weekends, go check it out. I think Josh and I tried a few different places. Some places were official tasting some places we just kind of went and got the food ourselves especially if places are a little farther out because our wedding venue is a little outside the city try it out see how it is and then either the next day or like the next week and go try another place so it definitely takes some time especially if you don't have open weekend after open weekend something i didn't know is that you don't have to know the exact amount of people that you're feeding at that time you're just securing that date and then once you get closer to your wedding date a lot of caterers will have you give them a final count another reason you want to figure out your catering is so that you can know what types of food options to put on your invitations if you need guests to select certain types. So for ours, we didn't really have them select certain meats. We're just having them select a meat versus alternative option. That way we can account for dietary restrictions. I would highly recommend starting your invitation process early, earlier than you would think you need because the amount of work and effort that goes into choosing your invitation style, what colors you're thinking of, how you word each part of your invitation. If you're doing a wedding website, how the 
details that you're putting in your invitation also correspond onto your website. Evites versus online RSVP versus paper RSVPs or both. There are so many details that go into it and so many different conversations that we had, I think for the past like week or so. Every night we would dedicate a few hours to work on invitations. I did not think that that much time and effort went into them. So there is a lot of respect for people who do any type of invitations. I'm honestly probably just gonna make a whole video on that because there are so many little details that we had to figure out. But make sure that you start your invitation process early and then you don't have to actually send them out until about two to three months before your wedding. Some people even say six to eight weeks, but I feel like that is cutting it very close. The next one is dessert. So you don't necessarily need to have this figured out for any particular reason super early, but I just thought it was nice to have all of our food and drinks done beforehand. That way we didn't have to think about it with going into all the other details we needed to plan out. So whether you're doing a cake, cupcakes, donuts, just figuring out what types of desserts and what things will be needed to serve those. Also what type of decor you may need on those things, depending on how big your cake is gonna be or if you're doing individual cupcakes, do you need flowers, greenery, anything decorating your dessert table. Next one is bridesmaid and groomsman outfits. So I made a video on this. It helps you pick out what the overall theme of your wedding is gonna be, your color scheme, but also a lot of the shipping can take so long. It said it would take like six to eight weeks. One of my friends actually sent it to her house. It never got delivered, got returned back to sender. Then they sent it back to her. So it was a whole thing. I think she just got it recently. So make sure you account for any shipping delays and stuff like that. It's just better to have that ordered, especially before the six month mark. Another one I didn't even think about was the officiant. So obviously you have to have someone marry you. And again, Josh and I just moved to Austin. So we don't really know anyone who lives here that we would want to marry us. And we actually wanted it to be more of a personal experience. So I know you can either hire someone, you can have someone who leads your church or something do it. But we ended up just choosing someone that we knew and someone we were close with to do it. We've seen people doing that more at weddings and we really liked it. So we thought it would be a really special experience to have someone we actually know marry us. But make sure you start that process early, especially because that will give your efficient time in order to create the ceremony. I know we have meetings set up with our person in order to kind of figure out the flow of the ceremony and what types of things we would like and what types of things that we wouldn't. Oh my gosh, this is so much later, but I'm gonna try and insert this where it belongs. Honeymoon planning. Oh my goodness, I did not even put this on my list. Josh helped so much with the honeymoon planning. I have to give it to him. He basically planned the whole thing. Highly, highly would suggest planning somewhere around the six month mark, earlier if you can. I know it really depends on like flight prices and hotels and that can fluctuate, but the earlier the better. That way you just don't have to think about it. It's already set, especially if you're doing any type of excursions or activities. You wanna make sure that everything is available for the place that you wanna go. Also, depending on where you're going, that way you can make sure you have any passports, vaccinations, or literally anything that you might need depending on where you're going. It will also help you plan out for after your wedding what your activities will be. So some people will leave for their honeymoon like the night of, the next day, or maybe you're planning to spend that weekend with your friends and family and then you leave a few days later. Also, that will give your work enough notice in order to take off any time that you may need for your wedding and honeymoon. So these next ones I would highly suggest for about three to six months out from your wedding. Wedding rings is something that I severely procrastinated. Josh walks into the ring shop. Basically the first one he tried on is the one that he chose. And my experience was not the same. Again, this is probably gonna need a whole nother video about what happened. I would try some on, think about them, you know, take pictures, marinate, go back weeks to months later, try some more on, go back. It was just a whole process. I would do a lot of online research. Like there are so many different options for wedding rings out there, especially because you have to find one that goes with your engagement ring. And it's just a whole puzzle that you have to figure out. The next one is linens. I did not even think about the table linens that are gonna be out there on a wedding day for both reception and cocktail hour. Some caterers provide linens. Our caterer doesn't. So we had to go through like an event rental company. And even then the colors that we thought that we wanted were sold out or already rented for the day of our wedding. So we ended up going with these other ones that are absolutely gorgeous, like so excited for them. But it's like, oh my gosh, these are linens. Like I would not think that these are booked up months in advance, but they only have a limited supply of each type of color. So it makes sense. Also their delivery service was completely booked for that day, regardless of the color we chose. So we actually had to go through a third party delivery service in order to get the linens to us. Another one is getting your wedding dress shoes for your fittings. This is kind of twofold. Finding the shoes was so hard. There are so many different options that I didn't know people are doing these days. You like, can do sneakers, you can do heels,
heels. You can do like really fancy heels. It was just so stressful trying to online shop because I'm someone I like to see things in person. Like I cannot online shop for stuff, especially for an event. So I really wanted to go in person and look for shoes, but every like bridal store that I went to, none of them had shoes. And then the department stores didn't really have like wedding shoes out. And I didn't want to get a really expensive pair of shoes. That was my thing. Like if this is going to be something that I spend a lot of money on, I want to be able to wear on the bunch, but I also wanted to make sure that they were bridal and special. I didn't just want to get an everyday pair of shoes. So it's really a lot of balancing of like, well, how fancy sparkly do I go? Will I wear these in the future for that price type thing? I don't know. This is just all the stuff that was going through my head. It's just shoes. But at the end of the day, I don't want to be impractical. Also, you want to make sure that you're able to walk in them. I don't want to get blisters. I don't want to have to like break them in or anything. Too much other stuff going on. Like I can't think about my shoes the day of the wedding. I actually ended up just going with a pair of shoes that I have. I know and love them so much. I wear them everywhere. I actually found them in white online. And so I was like, that's perfect. They're the perfect height. I know that my feet won't hurt and ended up choosing those. Once you get your shoes, you can schedule your dress fitting because you need your dress to be the length that it will be with the shoes that you're wearing. And sometimes fittings take a few weeks. So make sure that you get that planned in advance to where your dress will be ready to go, not just for your wedding, but also if you're taking bridal portraits. So this is the next thing I would say, make sure you schedule bridal portraits if you're doing those beforehand. It was my mom who brought up that sometimes people do them before the wedding so that you have more time during the wedding to take like group pictures and stuff. In order to know when to book my bridal portraits, I need to know when my wedding dress was gonna be done. To do that, I needed to get shoes first. So there's a lot of things that depend on each other. Also for your bridal portraits, that is where you will be testing your hair and makeup. So I had to make sure that the people that were doing my hair and makeup had availability on the same day that my photographer had availability. And then even before all that, you have to make sure that everything that you want for your look is ready and set. Even maybe more months out from your wedding, I would start to test places for where to get your nails done, where to get your hair cut and colored, where to get your eyebrows done, test out spray tans if you're gonna get a spray tan. These are things that, say you go to a nail place and you don't like how they did your nails, that's weeks that you have these nails on and then you're gonna wanna try another place and see if that place is good or bad. If you're living where you're getting married, maybe you already have your go-to places. Moving to Austin, I didn't have any of these places set up in mind. So as soon as we moved here, I started trying out different places in order to know that I could have a go-to place for my wedding. Another big thing that maybe or maybe not you're already doing is buying white dresses and just like white outfits in general. I did not realize how many events that you would need to wear white at or traditionally you do. There are different things like your bridal shower and rehearsal dinner, your bachelorette party, swimsuits for your bachelorette. Just so many different things that you need white outfits, white shoes, white sunglasses, just so many miscellaneous white items. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money all at once when those things start to come up, start to buy things over time and accumulate these white outfits. Also, make sure that your bachelorette party is planned. Whether you have like your maid of honor or someone in your bridal party planning it, if you've hired someone to plan your bachelorette, or if you're like me and thought it was a great idea to plan it yourself, make sure that things are getting done. I'm someone who I really like to be involved in party planning process, especially my own. I feel like it'd be really fun to do all that. But luckily, all of my bridesmaids have been super helpful, suggesting so many different fun things for it. So they are really helping plan a lot. It's more of like a collaborative group effort, especially Especially if y'all are going on a trip somewhere, giving people plenty of notice of what days are expected to be there. If people need to come late, making sure that you can plan around certain times. If people are able to take off work or not. Giving people to submit time in advance in order to take time off. And just making any reservations that you would need, making sure that's done months out. And now, personally, we are in that zero to three months range right now of stuff. So it is getting down to the wire. We're starting to do things like planning our rehearsal dinner, the food, the timing, who's all gonna be there. Sending our photographer and videographer shot list. So these are certain pictures that you want people in. Say you want one of both of our families in it. We wanna make sure that we get those pictures. Our ceremony and reception songs. That is something that we started working on this weekend actually. I didn't know that a ceremony had so many songs that you need to account for. You need to have like your parents song, groomsmen, bridesmaids, bridal song. Like there are so many different things that go into it. Also like the befores and the afters and the vibe of the whole day and what type of music you play, a do play playlist, a don't playlist. There's a lot more that goes into the songs than I expected, but it's been actually really fun to start honing down on those specific things because for the longest time I was like, I have no idea what songs we're going to pick, especially for dances and stuff. It's making it more real now that we're actually making those selections. Another one is like a day of activities. So what are the girls and boys going
going to do the morning of. Girls, it's a little more straightforward because we're like getting our hair and makeup done super early. We'll pretty much be at the venue all day. The guys are a little different because they don't need to be ready. We actually don't want them to get ready and mess anything up. But so figuring out like what the boys are gonna be doing that day, making sure we plan for meal times and sandwiches and breakfast, any type of reservation, so like bouquet stuff, and then miscellaneous decor. So like table numbers, name cards, different decor that we have throughout, what's on our entry table, and the bride and groom drinks, all the fun little stuff that you think about that is leading up to the wedding. You want to only have to focus on that. It's a really fun time and it's so exciting to get to make all these decisions and I'm super grateful for it, but there is definitely a lot that goes into it. So it's nice to have everything spaced out so where you're not making a bunch of decisions financially or just mentally in a short amount of time. So that is all the big wedding updates I have and kind of a timeline for when I would suggest doing these things. I hope that's helpful for anyone who's getting married soon, anyone who's planning a wedding in the process, just got engaged, just trying to help y'all and make sure that things don't get more stressful than they need to be. Thank y'all so much for watching to the end of this video and see y'all soon. Bye!